Hello. Today is Friday, August 2nd, 2024. This is a sideshow. I'm Theodore Parker. And this broadcast is coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky. Today, the weather is um, partly cloudy, lows overnight in the upper 60s. Storms are possible this morning. The high today will be around 93 degrees, and presently the temperature is setting at around 70. A little cooler than yesterday by 9 degrees. And the sunrise was at 6.42 a.m. Sunset at 8.45 p.m. The wind is around 3 miles per hour, and the AQI is good at 34. Pollen is moderate. Thunderstorm is possible in this area around 9.15 a.m. today. And across the country yesterday, uh, Kansas experienced 70 mile per hour winds during a softball game that turned chaotic. Speaking of the weather, yesterday evening, here in Lexington, we have an event called Thursday Night Live, and I was thinking about going to it and running a few other errands. It goes from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Then the weather advisory comes through, so I went a little bit earlier and came back, and the weather comes on, and the storm front, thunderstorms, rain, is moving west to east. So um, around 6.30, the advisory comes in and says that if you have anybody that is a friend of yours that's downtown at Thursday Night Live, to let them know that rain is on its way and the storm is on its way. So within about 30 minutes, you know, I'm sitting there and I hear this. And it was enough to make me get up and go to the window and look. And the wind is blowing so strong that the trees are like bending, bending in the wind. And then a few minutes later, here comes this torrential rain. And um, as reports are coming in, other parts of the country was experiencing similar activity. So, we have a few more rain events before next week, and then the temperatures will drop into the high 80s, and um, no rain predicted for a few days. As I said, this is a sideshow. I'm Theodore Parker, and if you're watching the sideshow on Facebook and Instagram, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Talk about it on WhatsApp. If you're watching the Sideshow on YouTube, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And the Sideshow Coffee Cup, 11 ounce black ceramic, good for all beverages hot and cold, dishwasher safe with the logo on the side. Buy from me for $17 plus shipping and handling. And that offer is good worldwide. Pay me through Cash App. My Cash App tag is dollar sign TR Parker One. As I said, we are now in the month of August. Today is Friday, August the second, twenty twenty four. Um, according to the calendar, we have a few more weeks left officially to the summer. And the temperature has been rising, staying up sometimes in, with a three-digit heat index. In the news, landslide in India. This is a couple of days ago, I believe on Wednesday. Wayanad District Administration confirmed that 167 people dead in 
Why not landslides? 167 bodies and 61 body parts have been retrieved by 7 p.m. today. This was a news flash, but would have been yesterday. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, today expressed sadness over the devastation caused by massive landslides in Wayanad in Kerala. Why does India have so many landslides? India has the highest mountain chain on earth. The Himalayas, which are formed due to collision of India and Eurasian plate, the northward movement of the Indian plate towards China causes continuous stress on the rocks, rendering them friable, weak, and prone to landslides and earthquakes. Just so you know. Is it hot enough for you? How hot is it? Since we've been experiencing these extreme temperatures with a heat index, it uh, reminded me that former President Al Gore had, um, this was when I was back in college, university, I'd seen a video presentation of his um, thoughts on climate change and what later became also added to global warming. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the formula. You know, we get oxygen from trees and plant life and that versus air pollution. And uh, if that balance is not kept, then we have uh, greenhouse gases, which means that the amount of oxygen is not clearing enough air for us to be comfortable. The plants are not providing enough oxygen to allow us to be comfortable in our environment here on Earth. So as the years have passed, climate change summits, meetings have um, been put in place and also as a byproduct to help cope with the problem um, you have your city planning which is supposed to see that we have enough trees and if you notice, as you travel on the highway, there's usually vegetation, trees, greenery on both sides of the highway to help counteract the pollution that comes off of cars from exhaust and the emissions that they produce. And then you have housing and urban development, which also is supposed to help keep things balanced uh, in regards to our environment, and then national parks, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been hot. So that heat index is an indication, as far as I un understand it, that this balance is off. You know, we used to say when I was younger, side enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk, and it would just be the, the, the temperature. Now we have a heat index. And not only is it hot here in the continental United States, according to one weather report in the last few days, every part of the country is hot except for um, the north from Central America, Central United States over to the northeastern part of the United States. Everybody else is experiencing a heat wave. And not only is it hot here in the United States, but it's also hot in Paris, France, where the 2024 Olympics are taking place. Um, I was watching, and especially with beach volleyball, it said the uh, heat index was 106, and they're in the sand barefoot. And um, 
It kind of lends to other reports about the weather, just like India has the highest mountain range on earth. Here in the United States, something I hadn't thought about in a long time, in the Mojave Desert, Death Valley, uh, is the lowest point. And um, usually there's an average annual temperature of 108.5 degrees at all times in Death Valley. This year in the month of July, the temperature went up to 129.5 degrees during the month of July. And um, the heat there is so intense um, that even for a helicopter to try to execute some type of rescue attempts, the lift ability of the helicopter is impaired due to the density of the heat on the floor of Death Valley. It's just a few mental images I'm, you know, expressing to allow you to appreciate the effects of the heat. So, um, according to Death Valley reports, at least five people every year fatally succumb to the heat in Death Valley. Uh, most recently, one man decided he was going to walk barefoot in the sand and suffered third-degree thick-skinned burns from the heat in the sand. So, as the athletes that are have their games outside in Paris, France, perform for our enjoy, enjoyment and entertainment, and also, excuse me, for their own success at reaching a medal, gold, silver, or bronze, we can bear that in mind. And at the last count, uh, the medal count for the USA uh, combined, gold, silver, and bronze was 34. And over the past few days, realizing that the games are going to run until the 11th of this month, um, mostly it's been gymnastics, swimming, some surfing, three-on-three -three basketball, table tennis, um, uh, skateboarding, um, X Games with the bicycles. And most of the entertainment has come from women's gymnastics. Uh, Simone Biles, for every reason that we can think of and that I'm aware of, is definitely um, showing why at 27 she is considered to be the GOAT, greatest of all time in the sport. As I said, she performed um, one of her signature uh, techniques, Biles 2, and um, it's just been a pleasure to watch the athletes engage in their various um, sports and activities. Uh, realizing that this these athletes are the best in the world, they come together every four years, you know, for these events, and um, we've just been entertained. Uh, one thing I did, did hear uh, at the last games of this nature, uh, when Simone Biles bowed out, um, it was stated that she was having mental health issues. And one of the commentators during this particular session of the Olympics kind of put a little more um, understanding to that. There's a... Um, she was suffering from what gymnasts call the twisties. And this was something I didn't know about. When they said mental health issues, me being a man, I just took it to be something female, which even if you explained it to me, I probably wouldn't understand it any better anyway. But come to find out, it is a gymnastic term called twisties, where a person um, loses their orientation in the air as to where they are in relation to the ground. So last time out, when she stepped away or stepped back or withdrew herself 
It was because that was the condition that she was suffering from. So um, as one commentator has said, and, and all the commentators have those moments where they just are truly excited about what they are seeing from these athletes. He said, <laughs> even on a bad day, you know, Simone Biles is head and shoulders above most of the other uh, participants in her designated sport of gymnastics. So she's adding to the gold uh, that she already has. And then we have the personal stories that go along with it. Um, all these American athletes have touched us all with their preparation and determination to do the best that they can do. And uh, gymnastics in particular has kind of educated me as to, um, well, intestinal fortitude that it takes just to do the sport for men and women. Um, there's usually seven rounds of whatever designated exercise there is. And uh, according to the scoring, uh, you have the um, exercise itself, uh, the difficulty, then the penalty, and then the score. Well, I, you know, I can't keep up with all of that, but at the end of when they get ready to show, display the score for each athlete, and the far right, there's uh, boxes, and there's like a green triangle, and then a yellow or gold box, and then there's a red triangle uh, inverted with the point down. So um, as far as I can understand it, for individual performances, the score goes to 16. And then when all the scores after the seven rotations are performed, you want a 60. So that being said, you can see how close everybody is and then the two bottom scores are thrown out. Then you go ahead and do your evaluation of the performance. So in days ahead up to the 11th of August, we still have more Olympic games to, to show and uh, see uh, coming across the TV. And all the athletes there um, are doing their best. There have been a couple of incidents. Uh, in particular, Coco Graft in her uh, tennis match um, objected to a ruling by one of the judges on a ball that was ruled by one judge as being out and another judge ruled it as being in. And she spent a few minutes, you know, as social media responded, advocating for herself in tears uh, about the decision that was made about the call on the ball. So um, she said she was not so much upset, you know, that, you know, she was behind in the score um, and she wasn't upset that, you know, she was losing and like, now I'm gonna make a big scene so I can get some attention and change things around. She acknowledged that her, she had a, the opponent that she was facing was good, you know, and that she had to be at her best. But at that particular moment, at that call, she felt that she could turn the tide a little bit and start changing, you know, things to her advantage. So um, she mentioned that Serena Williams had experienced similar moments, you know, during her time uh, on the tennis court. And um, she, you know, just spoke up for herself. So um, out of that, you know, it says that she suggested a rule change or uh, a rule change should be forthcoming. The other one is in women's boxing. This, as if you just read it, is, um, you know, leaves a little bit to the imagination. Um, two female, two boxers were barred, kicked out, you know, 
no longer allowed to participate in the old uh, women's boxing division. Come to find out, um, both of these athletes in question, without it being like said straight out, are transgender. So the one that initiated the decision was a woman is in the ring with a transgender female and gets hit twice. And um, she felt like, you know, the damage, you know, to her was extreme under the circumstances. Um, and even her nose might have been broken. So she, you know, said, that's enough. I don't want to do anymore. And that's all. So um, the athlete that she was facing and another athlete had already participated in competitions prior to getting to the Olympics. And here they are. But to me, anytime that situation occurs, um, we have a transgender person, especially a male, moving into a woman's sport, and especially a com combat sport like boxing, you know, it doesn't leave very much to the imagination to say that that person wants to beat up on somebody. Uh, female, definite advantage. So that's the give and take on that decision regarding that one. Um, as it's been said, you know, and plus Coco Graff going back to the tennis, along with LeBron James, were one of the ceremonies torchbearers for the opening ceremonies last Friday. So we are a weekend. So there's a, a little give and take in all of that. And since the athletes have put so much into it, you know, um, here we in America are cheering our athletes on. Snoop Dogg is there cheering his on. And I really admire him, you know, for moving around uh, with the various athletes and at least participating in that in the sports that they are doing themselves. At 54, you know, running, fencing, everything else that's going on, giving it a try so you know what it feels like. And he has been doing that. So he's been a real crowd pleaser in that area. And it's been said, aim for the moon. And even if you miss, you will still land among the stars. And this reminds me uh, of another thing. Um, an interview that Kobe Bryant had. Um, and he was describing uh, an occasion where he had young people um, that were interested in basketball and he was putting them through some exercises. And one of the exercises that he was putting them through is called in, uh, suicides. It's a basketball term for training uh, endurance, you know, uh, by running from one end of the court to the other, which imitates a full court sprint, which allows like the outlet pass for easy layup and uncontested score um, points, et cetera, et cetera. So he was had said that these young people were supposed to do whatever amount of suicides they were supposed to do. And each time they go up and down, make sure they touch the line. And if everybody completed it and did it correctly, he would give new shoes to everybody in the group. Well, it just so happened that one young person on one pass did not touch the line. So, you know, let them know that this person didn't do it, so therefore nobody gets shoes. And the point that he was making is that you have to do what's necessary to prepare yourself to reach the goals that you want to achieve. So success is when preparation meets opportunity. And that was the point that he was making. Olympics.
Paris 2024. So if you're like me and listening to the commentators and talking about the heat and various things that uh, are going on, I think since it's uh, broadcast on NBC, they were discussing, and the Eiffel Tower is in the background, the distance from where they were to the Eiffel Tower, which is where beach volleyball is taking place and some other things. Um, it's like a 25 minute walk. So I've you know, been fortunate enough to go other places, to visit other places. And I know you technically, you don't just jump up and say, well, yeah, I'm going to Paris. It's a little more than just that. So, um, I took a moment and I said, well, if I was there and had time on my hands to look around and see what Paris is like, what would I find? So number one, you got to get there. So flights to Paris from Los Angeles takes 10 hours and 35 minutes and the price from Los Angeles is $549. From New York, it takes seven hours and five minutes and costs $647. And from San Francisco, it's 10 hours and 35 minutes and costs $680. So uh, from New York, Paris is six hours ahead. And from the West Coast, it's nine hours ahead. So we're seeing things in the daytime where in Paris, the, the sky is dark. So some of the things that you could see as a tourist, number one in Paris are as follows. Please excuse me, I did not take French in school. So if my French lacks a little bit, just bear with me. The Eiffel Tower, built in 1889 for the World's Fair, is 1,050 foot tall tower and survived to see its 200th anniversary. The Arc de Triomphe uh, fought Napoleon's victory in 1806. Now, as those who fought in the French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars and World War I. The Louvre Museum, originally built as a fortress in the 12th century to protect Paris from invasion. This National Museum and Historic Site later became the residence of the royal family. Basilica de Secure Toda Monterey, also known as the Basilica of the Sacred Hearts of Paris. This Roman Catholic church sits on top of the Montmorey Hill and is known for its white domes. Notre Dame Cathedral. This 12th century Gothic masterpiece is known for its architecture, stained glass windows, and intricate carvings. Sainte Chapelle, built in the 13th century, this monument was once home to King Louis' religious relics and is known for its French Gothic architecture and unique stained glass windows. Paris Gonet, this opera house was designed by Charles Gonet at the request of Napoleon III and is considered the birthplace of modern classic ballet. Centre of Pompadour, this national cultural institution includes the Mosaic National de Art Modernaire and receives over 3.5 million visitors each year. The Pavillon, built between 1764 and 1790 as a church, this historic monument offers panoramic views of the city. According to information that's supplied, you can visit these landmarks and others in uh, three days. The suggested time if you're going to visit Paris is five days. And these are within a five miles of each other. Things to do as far as food and things of this nature are uh, in Paris. Breakfast, croissant, some fruit. Um, I know a lot of Americans like coffee in the morning or tea. Um, 
evening meal is taken um, between uh, 8 and 10. If you're going to dine out, reservations suggested to make your reservations between 7 and 7.30 or 9 and 9.30. Um, money. American money is not used in France, only the euro. So be prepared for having only euros available to pay. Tipping. Um, tipping is typically 15%, but it's already included in the bill. So you don't have to make, you know, unless you're just feeling super generous, you don't have to make a, a separate tip um, for your meal. They start typically in the morning, um, six and ends around midnight. Clothes, and this was the thing that surprised me. You know, um, it suggested that you can wear jeans, um, but usually something with a little bell bottom thing. Women might want to put on a little jacket, um, tennis shoes or, or athletic shoes, yes, but not the kind that you would use in a sport. Um, and colors. This was the one that kind of tickled me. If you're a resident of Paris, it is black, black, and black. <laughs> that made me smile. So that's just a few things about Paris, France, while we are enjoying the Olympics there as viewers and cheers of um, our American athletes, athletes from the USA. And it's Friday. And we have until the 11th for the Olympics before the closing ceremonies. This is a side show. I'm Theodore Parker. This is Friday, August 2nd, a new month, 2024. That's it. Hashtag.